You get a chance to grab yourself a cup of coffee in such weather or a cup of tea early this morning. It is the 17th day of August 2022, Wednesday, another money-making day for every other person out there. But the temperatures in, the Kamp in Kampala look very cold. The weather conditions since yesterday because of the rains that happened across the country. Uh, but then you can uh, take some, some tea this morning as well. And any time is tea time, you never know. And of course, you can never go wrong with a cup of coffee. Now, in the coffee court today morning, we are looking back at a discussion with um, the, the executive director of the Uganda Coffee Development Authority. Now, this time around, looking at Uganda's coffee development, what are the best chances of Uganda's export volumes to increase more and even higher than they were before with our top notch that with our top-notch agricultural product that is coffee so in this discussion we look at the coffee sector in Uganda thank you for watching smart technical tv as we continue to drive your business my name is Rona Nahabwe and the Queen of Coffee Court is the Executive Director of Uganda Coffee Development Authority. That is Dr. Iamulemi Emmanuel. So to be talking to us about coffee consumption, local consumption, the contribution, and much more. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, uh, Madam Nahabwe. Uh, good evening, viewers, and happy to be here sharing the coffee journey. Today we are, uh, we are celebrating uh, one of the most uh, important cooperations we've had in the coffee industry. That is the signing of memorandum of cooperation with private sector foundation, the apex body of uh, all the private sector institutions and associations in Uganda. And uh, it's very historical because uh, coffee growth is coffee business. And this is a space we have not been uh, looking at. There has been much more support the private uh, sector, but more individually. And now this is where we are looking at really uh, galvanizing and uh, coordinating all the private sector in the coffee industry so that they can tap in uh, all the different uh, aspects of the private sector foundation that it offers. Uh, what is co the coffee's contribution to the economy? Coffee it, uh, to Uganda has been uh, a mainstay of the economy. Uh, uh, coffee industry has been contributing between 11 to uh, 17 percent of the revenue earnings from the, for the country. And therefore, uh, it's a very, very important, uh, of course, uh, commodity for the country. But very important is that coffee is very democratic. Coffee touches the households, touches the, uh, the border border transporter, the women who are sorting coffee, those who are picking coffee, those who are processing coffee, those who are roasting coffee, those who are uh, exporting coffee, so coffee is around the very chain, it, it is uh, dropping money and therefore coffee is a, a cash cow, a cash, uh, and uh, to tell you what, coffee is the only commodity that you actually, when you are engaged in, you either have a check or it is cash, and therefore we are looking at how we can uh, drop this money around the very chain uh, for the private sector. And so we should be not, not looking at exports, which I'm happy to, uh, to inform the public that for the last financial year that, that closed in, in June, uh, coffee exports went up to 6.3 million bucks, the highest ever in the history of Uganda, and brought in the highest revenue ever, 800 uh, 62 million US dollars, up from 5.1 million uh, bags of coffee last financial year, uh, 2020-2021, that brought in 559 uh, million US dollars. So to the economy, uh, of course, coffee was the one of the number one coffee, rather one of the best earners of revenue. But also, let's also remember that coffee 
bridge uh, coffee prices, 80% of the export price is actually goes to the farmer, thanks to the uh, to the price transparency that UCDA provides to the uh, to the coffee value chain actors, where we encourage them by providing indicative prices, not to negotiate below uh, a certain uh, price. And where we uh, also make sure that no coffee exporter is going to register contract below the, uh, the indicative price. So this price transparency makes farmers get more money. And we are looking at how even when we go to the whole value chain, uh, everybody can know uh, which kind of uh, coffee prices can be improved in both the value added and also the green coffees. You mentioned about 34 million of the youth having to come into the coffee sector and benefit from this. How do you plan to do this? Uganda has the youngest population uh, in the world and uh, we also note that we, when we look at the youth and we are looking at a sustainability of the industry, the youth must be involved in. So we have strategically targeted the, uh, the youth right from the uh, universities where we have coffee clubs and this is where we take the coffee story to them. We believe with the education they have, uh, some of them are now going to join the, the, uh, the job market. They have to know about coffee because coffee is a business. But also at that level, that's when they think about, the, about their health. And coffee, unfortunately, has been demonized as a poison, as bad for women. That's where we, we start educating them about the myth about coffee. But that's where we also bring in the experts, uh, medical doctors, to talk about coffee and health. So we start from that story of business, knowing coffee health, and also demystifying them and also give them the tools and skills, uh, brewing, baristas, quality assurance, trainings. And we, uh, we, now we are looking at a partnership already with the Chambogu University where we are going to actually uh, go doing in the next few, uh, few weeks uh, to lay foundation stone for a training a training center where uh, we are going to have the youth clubs engaging uh, together so that we, ha we can have that space. Uh, by the time they come out, it doesn't matter what you've studied, you can enter the, co the coffee business, but also you can start now drinking coffee. But also going down to the uh, secondary schools, the young farmers, uh, associations we used to have in all the, uh, those early years, we want to have the younger coffee farmers, the younger farmers, the younger, the youth, appreciating how not just drinking coffee but also how they can start from the grassroots if you are offering agriculture how can you offer agriculture without knowing what coffee is because coffee is number one agriculture commodity for the country his excellency's proposal of processing our own coffee in the country just the the coffee consumption the youth we are also looking at the taking coffee at home we are, uh, we are taking the coffee to the farmers to know the coffee they have produced. So it's a, it's a whole uh, value chain that we are addressing, not only to the, to the youth, but also to the parents, taking coffee to the, uh, to the government institution, to the workplaces, so that coffee can be talked about, can be drunk most, and uh, we consume the coffee and keep uh, bring jobs and incomes and revenues in the, in the country. His Excellency's proposal of, pro of processing our own coffee in the country, how achievable is that? So that by the time the nice calves in ca cafe and the others that are processed from outside and then they are brought in the country and charged expensively, how can we process our own coffee? How achievable is that? The, uh, his Excellency has actually, it's not the first time that he has been uh, advising the coffee sector to invest in very addition. Yeah, and he, his words, he says, we are exporting our dollars, creating jobs uh, in foreign lands when we need jobs for the youth here. So it doesn't, it hasn't just started now. But uh, what has come uh, in the media in the recent times was when uh, he was talking about this, the agreement of the, uh, to establish a soil coffee facility in Uganda. 
But uh, to the public, this is uh, almost the ninth attempt. And uh, of course, we in the government, we feel we have not uh, done a lot uh, to that effect. But what we are now working on is the feasibility study with the uh, Uganda Development Corporation to actually bring it on board. We recently launched the, uh, the feasibility study. Uh, uh, the deadline is 30th. We want to call the public to actually interest them. Uh, they can ask if those who missed the, uh, the advert in the media, uh, we can still uh, download this uh, uh, this document on www.ugandacoffee.go.ug. Uh, that is our website. You go to the tenders, you refine uh, the, f uh, the feasibility study among the tender documents. We are looking at uh, companies which have ever done a soluble coffee because we don't want to give it an experiment. We don't want to fail it. Uh, uh, to deliver this, and we are very committed. Uh, we we believe. Do you have some companies cited? Uh, we believe that the, some of the companies here can partner with the other companies which have ever done sorry, coffee, uh, so that we can have the brand, the, not only the coffee, uh, instant coffee, but also the branding, the marketing along the value chain, so that the, the that those logistics. We can get them during the study. Uh, we can know where the, which kind of coffee is available, which volumes in which parts, and how the logistically they can come. The good manufacturing practices, all that space. Uh, after putting up that uh, that feasibility study, then the the company will be uh, uh, would recommend. Uh, we'll be working on the, the actual terms of reference to bring those firms which can invest in the, the country. The government is very committed through UDC uh, to make sure that this, uh, uh, this, uh, this sort of coffee plant is uh, realized through the public partnership approach of the Minister of Finance. Talk to us about Uganda's Mwanyi Telimba project. The humanitarian project of Uganda Kingdom is a, con a commendable um, a job uh, they've done. We have an MOU with the, the Bukadef, that's the development part of the kingdom, uh, where we have been working uh, together to promote coffee planting in, uh, in Uganda. And we thank WHT, um, particularly of Uganda, for taking the lead, uh, voicing about coffee and planting coffee, and therefore uh, the, the partnership with us, we are very happy that now has brought in these big volumes from Uganda, but also uh, across the country. So we believe uh, the next level is really a humanitarian bar bring the money to the, to the pockets of those who have planted by promoting quality, by promoting variation, so that farmers uh, should not look, in, look at about coffee as just a bean and put it anywhere. Because uh, by putting it anywhere, not in a clean environment, not handling it, uh, not harvesting the ripe cherries and drying on tarpaulins or lazy trays, then we can lose the, the actual value and then lose the money. So we want to uh, thank them for the commendable work uh, in the, uh, in the pu publicizing about coffee. But we have even take, taken the Imani Terimba actually to the churches. And I want to thank the, uh, the church organizations whom we have supported to plant coffee on the, coffee, on the church land, to take it to another level and they start promoting not the production alone, but also the, the variation, the quality, so that uh, as we go to the churches, we actually uh, go with, uh, with money. As we go to churches, we can come back and talk about how our improved livelihoods, not only spirituality, but also how we have improved our, our lives. When you, mention, when you mention marketing and coffee tourism, what do you mean? We can't talk about uh, coffee without talking about some of the guests we get. Yes. Uh, I, can, I, I can mention that we have many visitors who come to Uganda, and these visitors must also be part of our culture. 
culture includes food. So we want to, uh, to bring the foreigners who, who come to Uganda. But other people who come from other parts of Uganda that, go t that don't grow coffee, to come and uh, taste one of the best uh, coffees we have in the, in the world. So coffee tourism is, is where we are looking at the hospitality industry, uh, serving and promoting coffee, but also we are looking at coffee farmers who can, uh, uh, who can host some of the guests on their coffee farms. Do we have roughly the figures of how much investment we've received in the last financial year? Uh, the, there has been uh, tremendous investments uh, in the uh, coffee value chain. Uh, actually now uh, we are not talking of coffee to belong to the illiterate people, to the peasants. I see people in offices in suits, people in um, downtown in big uh, shopping malls, uh, people who have been uh, relegating coffee to, to those who have not gone to school, they are now the people who are investing. We are looking at also people who are retiring or think about retirement, that they've taken coffee as one of those investment portfolios. So much of the, much of the coffee, of course, has been more in the production, and that's the next level we are looking at. The, uh, and it talks from the uh, volume of exports we have been seeing. Uh, from 2014, 2015, there has been only a sharp rise in, uh, in the production, which uh, talks about the investment uh, government has put in the seedling production, but also investment by private sector in the production and the processing. Right now, we have seen uh, the coffee roasting industry growing up to 47 uh, uh, roasting and incubators, uh, incubators but also coffee uh, exporters uh, rising up to around 98 of them registered as by this financial year. So there is a lot of investment in the coffee sector, production, I processing, see. export, I see. but we want to have much more, including you, to join us and be part of that value chain because that value chain, that's where there is money. I believe I would soon. <laughs> okay, so, Talk to us about what UCDA is doing to increase the local, local consumption. Well, uh, it's, we have a domestic coffee consumption strategy which talks about the whole value chain. But what I can mention is that ultimately we want to see coffee uh, as a, a, an important beverage at household level. We want to see coffee to be the most popular uh, beverage because in the world, coffee is the second most popular beverage after water. But how many cups of water can you take in a day? Roughly two. Yeah. Two, those are two liters. Two liters. Supposed to take a liter or four liters. Now, coffee, uh, four cups a day makes you happy, uh, makes you healthier, makes you grow younger. Wow. So, and, what, and coffee includes water. So why would you not take coffee, if which includes water, water, instead of taking just water? Right. So coffee is a, is a, a beverage to, to, to drink, and I want to invite you uh, to pass by the nearest cafe and have a taste. I'll be glad. Sorry? I'll be glad. You'll be glad. Yeah. But also pass by uh, uh, UCDA, I'll be happy to give you the first uh, the, the finest coffee so that you for free so that you go and taste the best of the coffees okay i'll be glad to do that we've come to an we have come to an end of our show it's been such an honor thank you for allowing to speak to us dr emmanuel my name is rona nahabwe till next time at home or while uh, taking a cup of, for example, tea. But then when you look at the coffee seeds, if you've happened to, uh, to at least go into different cafes or different restaurants who are having coffee machines, and they make for you either way powdered coffee 
or at least a cup of conch coffee. You would test and you would feel the aroma of Ugandan coffee. And that is something that we are preaching to everybody. Because at the end of the day, we cannot push for exporting before our local market appreciates what we have. Because that is also something that we need to pick up from. We need to realize or the importance of taking our own coffee and showing the world that we are also consumers of this coffee. We need to preach something that we've tasted. We need to preach about something that we know of. We need to preach about something that we already know of its importance. And it's something that you, you and the other people will agree more about that. Ideally, if you've never taken uh, the initiative to drink some coffee, then you never know how important it is or how good or of what quality it has. Uh, just recently in our discussions here when we had um, a Japanese representative who was saying, in Japan, we do have market for coffee. The African countries have market for coffee. But however, it is very rare to find coffee from Uganda. But then surprisingly, um, he did reveal that in Japan you'll find coffee from Ethiopia because those people believe Ethiopia has better coffee. But then he says, unless someone is in Uganda and they've tested Ugandan coffee, is when they will know of what, of what equality this coffee is. Because even if we keep on telling people that our coffee has huge quality and we want to export it, but then even on the market it is rare. To find and um, when you are to look at, uh, to look at that, we've got some small and medium-sized enterprises uh, who are actually now dealing in coffee. Uh, others actually dealing with in value addition of this same coffee to ensure that Ugandans can can test and at least feel the quality of our coffee before we can speak good about it or before we can blame the government on one or two things about agriculture or anything. But if we are not part of this agricultural value chain, the value chain is actually wide. It can either be you as the farmer, you as the transporter, or you as the final consumer. Then be that final consumer because I personally will tell you I've, uh, I've at least done some coffee uh, and, and, and I know how to make some good coffee by the way so it is something that you would think of that coffee is always uh, a good idea and you can never go wrong with a cup of coffee on any day you can either take a cappuccino you can either take african tea uh, but either way you can either take a cappuccino espresso or double espresso uh, that is still with coffee and uh, that way we can get to understand that our coffee is good and we should be part of those daily consumers of it. Before we can actually seek uh, to look at the international market, coffee should be having market in Uganda. So this discussion is actually was entirely looking at coffee development and how we can revive these huge volumes of exports out of the country. This is Smart Men's Business. Stick around with me. After the break, we head into our topic of discussion, and this time on women in business. Good morning.